As far as I can concern, we might as well call it the cockroach tour. Yeah. The hotel cockroach tour. <laughs> and, uh, well, you, you are considered a major band. I mean, you have records, etc. But uh, are you still in the underground scene? I mean, oh, yeah. Do you have connect connections with underground? Well, that's the greatest thing. Even though, I mean, after seven years, we are still considered to be an underground band. Yes, and we are great. very flattered by that. I mean, if people would consider us to be a major band, that would mean that we have lost contact with the fans. And if people do consider us to be above underground, we would have to do something that would draw, to, draw us down to the lower level again. So you believe that the underground is the real metal scene? Yes. In the, in the metal comes from inside and not, not from outside. In, in the album The Return, you have a track. I think it's the album The Return, dedicated to the Countess. The Countess Elizabeth Batari. Why? The Woman of Dark Desires from Yeah, the, the Woman of Dark Desires. Third LP. Yeah. Why we dedicated it to her? I mean, after after two. She was burned alive. Right. She was uh, well, not really burned alive. Her corpse was burned. She um, died because she didn't eat anything. She was um, involved in her bedroom. Yeah. And then he took her body out and stabbed her into pieces and then burned the pieces. Yeah. Because great track. Great that's, track. That's the way they do it to women in Hungary. <laughs> well, uh, that's what she did. As you're in the uh, you're in the underground scene, uh, could you tell us, girl? few bands that you think uh, are going to make it, you know. Uh, in the underground? Yes. Not there's only in Sweden. All, there's, not only there, Sweden. There's, no, but I mean in Sweden. Um, all over, there are so many bands. Mm -hmm. And it's really up to the, to the record companies. I mean, they have signed so many bands right now. There are probably about 500 speed thrash death metal bands, really good ones that have records out. And even though the bands themselves are a lot of them, there will never be too many more fans. So it's quality that matters, not quantity. And there are certain labels which put out a lot of bands, whereas they don't concern about quality. They're concerned about quantity instead. Uh, yes, he's asking me if you still mind as calling you a dead metal band. Well, we was off in 1983. What do you call yourself? You know, because at that time in 1983, seven years ago, everybody called themselves black metal. And we said, well, okay, our lyrics deal mostly with death. So let's call ourselves death metal. And six months later, everybody called themselves death metal, including, you know, Hellhammer, Kelvin Frost and all that. So what do we call ourselves now after seven years? Well, why not power metal? Because we'd rather bet the power that goes to your heart, the noise that goes to your ears. Quartin, what are your main influences? Not as a band, you specifically, you Quartin, what are your main oh, influences? Your taste. <laughs> that would probably be the classical things that I do listen to, Rick and Not Roger. just bands, well, things I that mean, inspire the tracks. I mean, if you write lyrics and music, it really doesn't take anything more than just a piece of paper and a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> because what you have is in your head anyway. You read a good book, you go to the libraries, or you go to the museums, or you have a good dinner or you make love all night with a woman or you do a lot of things. I mean, anything can inspire you. Yeah. Uh, could you let tell me if there was any evolution on your goals since the beginning? Of course now? there was. Yes, but what were the, the difference between your uh, the first goals of the band and the actual? Well, from the beginning, um, Everybody knows about Scandinavian Metal Attack compilation, the compilation album on which there are two battery tracks, uh, The Return of Darkness and Evil and Sacrifice, which was recorded in January 1984. And uh, we had our two tracks on that LP basically because um, the company needed one more band on this. There were five bands and each of these bands had two tracks. And I said, hey, take my band because we are really special. Because I was um, helping the record company out choosing bands for this LP. And, um, as the whole thing turned out, we were the only band who received a lot of fan mail from this LP. And as the thing turned out, the fans wanted us to make a whole LP, and so we did. But by, by, by that time, I had kicked the other members out, because they weren't concentrating on the band at all. Yes, you, have the sta you, you, have, you have the status of one-man band. Yes. Uh, what do you think about that now? Well, that, that is very stupid, because for seven years I've been doing interviews with journalists. And the big magazines have reached out to a lot of people. They never print the truth, really. Because the only thing that they concern more is actually to um, print things that are exciting, you know, which will sell magazines and, uh, um, well, not actually go in, in the way of the truth. So it's, it's a hell of a job for me going around and telling everybody that this is not a one-man band and this is not a project or anything like that. I've been having a lot of problems with members simply because in Sweden there's 
there's no real drive to make within rock and roll. If you don't make any money directly, you can go back to the work. Being a computer engineer, which you are educated for in the first place, you know, they cut their hair and, you know, they spend time with their girlfriends and stuff like that. You know. She's asking, why do you raise your lyrics in Viking mythology? Because for a lot of years we, we used to sing about what's below ground. And that's not very nice, especially when you're sending dead rats and dead hamsters in the fan mail and things like that. And um, you are bound to need to know something different and put it across to the fans. Why not sing about my history, you know, the history of my nation? I mean, you Portuguese, you must be rather proud. I don't know if you, you can say proud, but you, you ought to be, yes. you ought to be proud about your, you know, conquistadores, you know? Well, we have the Vikings, you know? Yeah. Quartin, once you have said in Metal Ever, I read it in Metal Ever, yes. In the streets of Stockholm, I'm just anyone, but in, on stage, I'm Quartin, the, the almighty, the evil one. What did, did exactly? I say that? Yeah. No, I didn't. It was Götz Kudemund. You didn't. Götz Kudemund, the journalist, wrote that. Yeah. Bullshit. Bullshit. Uh, Time out. Okay, just one. Left comments for the Portuguese version. Portuguese version. Well, hang on and, you know, stand up for yourself because um, no matter where you live, what do you look like, how you dress, how much money you have or anything like that, the sword is inside. Just one question. She's asking what's the meaning of the sign of the Black Mark. The sign of the Black Mark. The sign of the Black Mark. Well, it's an old saga. Uh, you know this sign. It's very familiar. It's called the sign of Bor, V W R, and uh, it's more or less the sign of the goat. Which in the Swedish story, on Christmas night, the goat becomes, you know, with a human mind, he can talk. So he talks to all the animals and say like, "Had the man been bad to you? You know, beating you or something like that? T asking the dog things, and they be, they are mean to the man back on Christmas night." And. Um, I draw something which is on the back of the first elf cup, you know, the black mark sign. And below that, below ground, you have the three claws with black nails, with the black nails scratching. That means that your soul becomes black. And that's the black mark. Could you just okay, give it your address? Give it your address. Yeah. Time's up, time's up. Could you write your address so that we can change you with the interview? Vamos embora. 